We'll call the meeting to order. I want to thank everyone for being here uh, to this month's meeting. Uh, glad to see a good crowd here. Uh, we want to call on uh, Minister Tamala Imes Tatum from New Jerusalem to bring our invocation. Thank you. Good evening, and thank you for this uh, wonderful opportunity to offer prayer this evening. May we bow. God, our sovereign creator, we ask your blessings on this meeting tonight and those who have assembled here this evening. Thank you for the men and women who have been chosen and elected to serve as leaders of our community. We ask that you grant them the wisdom to know what to do and the resolve to do what is right. May they speak out when it is time to speak out and listen respectively and receptively to other views that may be different from their own. May they be guided by the spirit of community, the spirit of justice, and the spirit of love. May they be reminded that it is their responsibility to serve the community's common good of all citizens of our community. Under their leadership, may Davie County emerge as a model community that reflects the beauty of our democracy and the goodness that still lies in the core values of our country. This prayer I pray in your holy and righteous name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for that beautiful prayer. Thank you. Um, tonight, leading us in the pledge is um, U.S. Army veteran Roger Funderburk. Uh, just a little bit about Roger. Roger served on active duty from 2002 to 2015. Originally stationed at Fort Bragg, Roger was a member of the 1st COSCOM 18th Airborne Corps. Then in 2005, Roger was reassigned to Fort Polk, Louisiana, where he served as sergeant with the Engineer Battalion for three years. In 2008, Roger was reassigned back to Fort Bragg with the 82nd Airborne Combat Aviation Brigade and later transferred to 1st Squadron, 73rd Cavalry Regiment, 2nd Brigade of the 82nd Airborne Division, where he served as a platoon sergeant and paratrooper. During his time in the service, Roger was deployed four times, serving in Afghanistan, Kuwait, and in Iraq twice during Operation Iraqi Freedom. Operation Enduring Freedom, and Operation New Dawn. Roger has been awarded the Army Achievement Medal, the National Defense Service Medal, the Global War on Terrorism Expeditionary Medal, the Global War, Global War on Ter Terrorism Service Medal, U the Humanitarian Service Medal, the Iraq Campaign Medal with Campaign Star, the Afghanistan Campaign Medal with Campaign Star, and the NATO Medal. Roger has been awarded the Army Commendation Medal six times and the Army Good Conduct Medal four times, as well as the Non-Commissioned Officer Professional Development Ribbon, the Army Service Ribbon, the Overseas Service Ribbon, the Parachutist Badge, and the Driver and Mechanic Badge. Roger is a Davie County native and is the husband of our Register of Deeds Kelly Funderburg, and I will say this, Roger's a one heck of a baseball coach. <laughs> Roger, come lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roger, do you want to say anything? Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here, brother. Thank, Thank you for you, your sir. service. <laughs> Ethics and conflicts disclosure. Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 160A-86 and Davie County Board of Commissioners Code of Ethics adopted December the 2nd, uh, 
2019, I'd ask each of you before you adopt the agenda if there's any actual, potential, or perceived conflicts of interest with respect to any matter on the proposed agenda, which will come before the board tonight for a vote. If so, please speak up and let the board know at this time before the agenda is adopted. Mr. Chair, seeing no one speak up, I conclude there's no actual, potential, or perceived conflicts of interest by any board member. Thank you, Mr. Fogler. Uh, do I have a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved. Ms. Finney, second. second. Mr. Reniger, any questions? All in favor, uplifted hand. It's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Vogler, public comment. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. There has been four individuals that signed up for public comment. Uh, the public comment rules were up at the desk as you signed up and had, you had a chance to look over those, but each person desiring to speak during the public comment section must have signed up on the sheet. When you come before the podium, you need to state your full name for the, the uh, clerk to the board so she can get that down. And then you have three minutes in which to speak. Uh, I will be timing you when there's two minutes left, I'll hold up a sign. When there's one minute left, when there's 30 seconds left, and when it's time to stop. So if you could be respectful of the, the signs and the time on that, we certainly appreciate that. I do not believe there is anybody who has signed up for a group. Uh, so you have the three minutes. If you were with a group, you'd have a total of five minutes, one speaker for all of you. Uh, so at this point in time, I would call the first one, which is Christine Mears. Hi, I'm Kristen Mears. I'm speaking as the Vice Chair of the Davie County Library Board of Trustees. We, the Library Board of Trustees, feel you, the County Commissioners, plan to set a dangerous precedent tonight by voting to appoint someone to our board without our recommendation. Our bylaws state you appoint people to our board from recommendations we submit and approve. Our, <clears throat> excuse me. The interpretation of our bylaws has not been questioned by county officials in the known history of their existence. This includes a similar incident last year, which resulted in us informing your board of our procedures and bylaws, you acknowledging and respecting their authority, and our offer for you to reach out to us if you have any questions regarding our purview. I have a copy of our email we sent to you. You have never reached out to us to discuss library matters. Instead, we found out via tonight's agenda that you seem to have rejected our well-qualified candidate, Jane McAllister, in favor of your own, Brent Ward, who is unfamiliar to the library, its staff, and the trustees. We request that you table Brent Ward's appointment until we can discuss this matter properly. Thank you. The next individual we've got who signed up is Jake Miller for Miller Tree Service. I assume that is probably uh, to do with the public hearing, which will be at a later time. Okay, thank you. Uh, next one we have is Brian, and I am not making out the last name. Cesaro. Cesaro, okay, that's a C instead of a P. Yeah. Okay, thank you. It's on public utilities. My name is Brian Cesaro, and I'm here just for a short minute to express my thanks to Andy Atwood and the Public Utilities Group. Uh, there was a water leak under the road in front of my house. Uh, I noticed it going into the drain. It wasn't like spurting out anywhere or anything. They came out probed and spent two days trying to find that thing. Uh, found it, had to work by hand because it was a gas, the main gas line was also crossing the water main. So they, they dug that thing out by hand, and his crew were out there for hours and hours, and they got it done. They fixed it. We've had no, no more water issues. Uh, it drained for hours. There was so much water underneath that road. Uh, but I really wanted to just say appreciate the hard work that they did because they were out there, and it was a long, long day. And the big thing was they did not mind me watching it because my neighbors were all wondering what was going on. I was able to be out there. Andy explained everything that was going on, what he found, and uh, I was able to re relay it to the, the, um, the other neighbors. So, again, from everybody in Kinderton Village, I thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Next we have is Brandy Kuntz. Hello everyone, I'm Brandy Kuntz. Um, some of you know me, some of you don't. I'm not here in a professional official capacity, um, even though I am an attorney and my office is three doors down. I'm here in regards to my concern that I share with Mrs. Mears about the possibility that this commission, that you as commissioners are considering circumventing the bylaws, policies, and procedures for appointing someone to the library's board of trustees. It makes me very concerned considering that it's my understanding that this same attempt to nominate someone in violation of the bylaws, policy, and procedures that are in place was attempted last year, and however that was defeated by the fact that you all, the commissioners at that time, were told that there was a policy and procedure for bringing appointments before you all for actual appointments, and you did not proceed at that time to violate those policies and procedures. I'm again here asking that you do the same and not violate or circumvent these bylaws and procedures. The citizens of Davie County have an expectation that you all in your role as commissioners conduct yourself with the utmost integrity and acts of good faith. Your code of conduct and ethics required as well, page one, governmental decisions and policies must be made and implemented through proper channels and processes of the government structure. Also. Rules and procedures for the Davie County Board of Commissioners revised December 2nd of 2019. Rule 32, it allows you as the board to follow the procedures to make an appointment to fill vacancies for the board and other board's public offices over which you have power of appointment. It's my understanding that you do not presently hold the power to pick nominees and randomly appoint them to this board. I would ask that you conduct yourselves with the integrity that I know that you all have and set aside that decision for this evening until you have an opportunity to discuss this with the Board of Trustees, especially if you are unhappy with the way that policy and procedure is currently in place. Thank you. And Mr. Chair, that's the only ones that have signed up with the exception of Jake Miller, who I saw, when I saw that, I, I think that would be on the other, other form. No problem. Okay, public hearing on uh, Miller Landscaping. Uh, Mr. Easter. Thank you, Chairman, Board. Uh, tonight I present for you, to you Zoning Map Amendment 2023-04. Miller Tree Service has applied to rezone approximately 6.22 acres from Residential Agriculture RA and Residential 20 R20 to Highway Business Conditional. The property is located at Underpass Road and is further described as Davie County Tax Parcel G860 Eight two. Uh, the applicant is Miller Tree Service. The property size is 6.22 acres. The current land use, it's vacant. The proposed land use is going to be commercial. Um, as you can see around it to the north of the property is residential and it is zoned RA and R20. To the west of the property is vacant. It's zoned RA and R20. To the south of the property is residential, it's zoned RA and R20, and to the east of the property, it's zoned RA and R20. The property was originally zoned residential agriculture on R20 in 1973. The proposed zoning is highway business conditional, uh, specifically for a building contractor, heavy, a tree service. Uh, the Davie County land use plan indicates this as rural residential. The Davie County growth enhancement strategy designates this area as secondary growth. Um, the three things that the board could consider is approved with conditions, defer or deny. And at the last planning board meeting, it will be noted on March 28th, the planning board heard this, deferred it. And April 25th, 
it was unanimously approved with the following conditions. During the April 25th planning board meeting, it was agreed upon by the applicant as well as the planning board to add supplemental buffering to fill in gaps with evergreen tree bushes along underpass road. The supplemental buffering will extend from the entry across Bailey Road to 414 Underpass Road. As you can kind of see at Bailey Road, the addition going down that way was what the additional conditions will agree upon. So at this time, the board has three motions they can approve with conditions, deny, or defer. And at this time, I'll be more than happy to answer any questions that this board may have. Any questions for Mr. Easter? Um, how, much, how far back is the actual, you know, structure or shed or whatever we would call it? I mean, how far back from the road is that? I'm, I've driven by there, but I was just trying to see how far that actually was from underpass. Um, or approximately, I mean. I'm approximately gonna... setback, it would have to meet all the requirements for the front setback off the front property, which would be about 45 foot to 50 foot off the front. But is it actually going to be a little further than that? I mean, I'm just... Uh, at this time, I don't know. It's, it's pretty much up to the permitting uh, process with okay. that. Okay. I will say the, the, the buffering that is already there uh, meets the requirements for the buffering. The only buffering that is required is the residential. If you look to the north of the property, that, that buffering is already there in place. They're going to add supplemental buffering along the front. There's railroad tracks along the back, which is not required. It's not required to add buffering on the front, but to fill in any gaps, the applicant has agreed to any gaps with the uh, proposed property owners across the road, discussed this, so it was agreed upon by both parties that that was what uh, uh, would suffice with the required buffering requirements. What, are they, what did you say again they're planning? Uh, it would be evergreen trees. Hopefully not Leland Cypress that die. <laughs> Well, it was so we, we can't specify for that, but but gaps with evergreen trees, bushes. Right. Pretty much, we we've taken exactly what the zoning ordinance requires for the buffering requirements. Other questions? Okay, let's move to the public hearing. Chairs and House, this is day and hour of the public hearing pursuant to Chapter One Hundred and Sixty D of the General. Statutes of North Carolina, Chapter 155 of the Davie County Code and Ordinance of an amendment to a zoning ordinance regarding Davie County Tax Parcel G8-82 located on Underpass Road, consisting of approximately 6.22 acres from residential 20 to highway business conditional. There's been new notice given pursuant to the requirements of North Carolina General Statutes and the Davie County Code and Ordinance by way of due publication of notice of a public hearing and newspaper general circulation in Davie County. The clerk to the board has attached affidavits showing the publication in said paper. I would ask all who wish to comment at this public hearing, come forward to the podium, state your full name for the board, and then comment on the proposal. I live on Bailey Road, 264 Bailey Road. My question to you, I guess you got the time around, is that I don't understand how everything can be basically agriculture. You put the impact on this, which there's nothing out there that is sightly to commercial property, which I own a business. Mine is 2,050 foot off the road. The other question I have is why would y'all pass up a great opportunity for these guys to have a place on 801, which is a highly traveled road. There is commercial property across from it. This was done months ago. I asked at the planning board at the first meeting why it was not passed to be there. They chuckled and said, y'all made the decision, so I'd like to know what the answer to that is. I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but I just like to know what's going on. This this is a comment section. This is not a question and answer session. And it I'll, may not be question and answer, but I'd like to know the basis of why you did not approve it. All we did, all we did, sir, was defer it back to the planning board. We didn't. We made no changes. Made no requests. So we deferred it back. Why was for it denied the, by the planning board? Can you tell me that? They withdrew their petition. They what? They withdrew their petition. They didn't. They didn't continue the process. They decided not to be there. Okay. Well, 
I'm totally against it, right, which I go out the end of my road, and that's the first thing I'll see. They own property beside me, and if you would go down and look what mess they have between my property and their property, it's totally obscene. But I know y'all probably made your mind up. That's fine and good, but I'll sit back down. Anyone else? Jake Miller, I uh, live at 202 Bailey Road, which is about 1,000 feet from this property that I have purchased to move my resi uh, residential commercial free service to. Uh, we have about 13 employees. We've been uh, in business since 2000. Uh, we're just looking for a central location to put all of our stuff in. Um, we've been through this process, and I appreciate everybody that's been part of it, especially Johnny Easter, my office manager, uh, Josh Elks. Uh, but to uh, Mr. Russell's comments, uh, I apologize that we're obscene. I didn't, I didn't feel like uh, our equipment was obscene to you. Uh, but I, I try to carry myself in a manner that would be respectful to other people. Uh, we have met with many of the neighbors, and we've talked with them. This, this particular piece of property that we're talking about here had been for sale for you know ten years. Nobody wanted it. Nobody wants it because it's a very oddly shaped triangle pie with the backside being on the railroad tracks uh, you know to your point of how where the building would be you know we're only talking about probably 200 foot depth total so i think that's one of the reasons why the property hasn't been uh, done anything with uh, and there again i think it's a i think it's a wonderful place to put it if, you, if you're familiar with Bay, uh, Underpass Road, if you're sitting right there at the fire station, you have a fire station right there. To the right of you, you have a uh, cemetery. You turn left, you see the old advanced garage door building. Uh, there's a commercial property there, uh, the Patton Brothers own. Uh, you go a little further, and then there's the railroad maintenance yard, which is about 300 feet from the edge of, of my property. So to say that it wouldn't fit in, I think, is not true, because even directly across the street, there's a church with a cemetery. Uh, there are two properties, uh, two residential properties that are directly across from it, and we have, uh, I feel like we have went over and above what Davie County calls for as far as requirements on what it should try to look like. And those, those pictures there is some renderings that uh, <clears throat> me and my daughter came up with. I'm not the best at PowerPoint, I apologize, but uh, you know, it, what I want to have there is a, is a nice property. Uh, you know, uh, we have a, I've invested a lot of money in equipment and you know, for people to say that it's unsightly, I mean, you know, flip to the back page. It's, it's, we were just recently in one of the uh, shows for uh, Arbor Culture down in Charlotte and our, our truck was the marquee site for this particular company so uh, I don't think our stuff is unsightly uh, I think when you see it most of them have American flags on it and uh, I sort of like it so I would hope that you would allow me to use my property uh, for the best interest of me and my employees so thank you Jake did you indicate you live near the property yeah I live uh, parcel 170 I live to the Okay. Right at that. Yeah, I see it. Mm -hmm. It's not 170. It's one over. Okay. It's off Bailey Road. Yeah. Uh -huh. Bailey Road. Okay. Thank you. So, Jake, the fencing that you're planning on putting up is is just a chain link. It's not. It's not any. It's a black chain link, and we've talked about there's a, some opaque screening that we'll uh, we'll probably add to that. And all of your equipment will fit in this building. No. No, we're not. Now, when you say opaque screening, are you kind of talking about, for lack of me describing it better, something like you might see on a base, like a yes, outfield yes, fence? Yes, yes, something like that. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not trying to build a privacy wall or, 
you know, 10 foot high berm or anything like that. You know, I, I, that's not the requirement set forth in the master plan as secondary growth for Davie County. And to be quite honest, I like looking at my equipment. <laughs> so that's where I'm at. I thought at the first planning board meeting they were discussing a berm. That they, they were recommending a berm and fencing that shielded the equipment, the site. Well, equipment. once, there again, we've already met as is the requirements, and I was not a, a proponent of a berm. If you go out of uh, 414's driveway right now, it's already, the, my property's already about six foot elevated. So to add any more dirt to that would disturb you know, the trees that's already there that Miss Vogler of 404, 414 wants. Um, so I, I think we can achieve what the neighbors would like with, with, with proper screening and no berm. You know, if you just add a berm to there, you're just gonna kill everything that's there anyways. Mr. Miller, when, um, before you withdrew your application the last time, I think you had indicated that the property was going to be used just to store your vehicles or your equipment. Right. There's not going to be any sawing operations no. or any no, there's no, uh, daily activities on the property other than your equipment coming in and out. As Mr. Easter said um, during the planning meeting, that would require a sawmill designation, and we will not be doing that. Could be routine maintenance of, of vehicles and equipment, uh, but yeah, no. And, and Miss Miss Vogler, she she mentioned that too. But yeah, no grinding. No grinding. I mean, no dumping. Nothing. I mean, hate to ask all that. Not not uh, saying that you're not sincere. But we've had other we've had some other sites where there the intent was some oh, no, border. I, and then we're getting borderline uh, nuisance type stuff. So, well, no, I, I understand, <laughs> but that's also why I think the property is ideal because it is backing up to Norfolk Southern Railroad. Uh, comes by twice a day, lets that train horn rip. So, you know, wh what else is going to go there? Is what I would say. You know, if, if you know from a growth perspective, nobody wants it. Nobody, nobody wanted to do anything with it. And now that I have it, you know, I feel like this is a great opportunity for us to, you know, move our business up there. And, and, uh, and there again, it'd still be near my house. And, and there again, as a member of the community, I don't want to see what's happening, you know, a little further down the road at the railroad tracks. And, and, and I'm not going to do that. Uh, thank you for asking. I do have one more question. Where do you dump your debris whenever you? We have uh, local dumps. Uh, throughout uh, we, we come up here to Moxville uh, to their their landfill you dump your mulch in the landfill we dump our mulch at corn products we recycle it okay. and they burn it for steam uh, I guess it's RA I guess it's RA RA because I started it out with a ladder a pickup truck and I didn't tell anybody well what I'm what I'm trying to do is is is, is do things the right way uh, um, like mr. Jim. I think we've met the requirements for uh, the zoning through the and all the recommendations for of the planning board and everything that was set forth in the um, master plan as far as secondary growth thank you anybody have any other questions anybody else anyone else comment mr. chairman seeing no one further come up to speak I conclude that at this point in time uh, that within your duty to go ahead and close the public comment section of the public hearing and then move forward with the public hearing. I have a motion to close the public comment. Richard, do I have a second? second. Terry, second. All in favor? Okay.
All right, we are open to uh, discussion or motion. The only thing I will comment on is that, you know, it always pains me to take any land that's basically in a ra residential agriculture use and do something differently with it. I, but I do feel like, well, a couple things. I feel good about the fact that we went with the deferral back and looked at some options to improve the site. And while that may not be acceptable, you know, to a neighboring area, I mean, I have to be honest with myself. And even though I don't wouldn't want to do that, I've driven by this area probably a thousand times during my life. And when you go down through there and the railroad borders like that, I find it difficult to know other than maybe that one far end up there of what anybody would ever do with it. It was a oddly shaped ball field at one time. Very oddly shaped. So in other words, you could hit a ball about 120 feet and have it go in the road if you pulled it down the line. So uh, I, you know, so you know that that's just my input on the consideration and and you know, the I always feel like anything like this is a tough decision but it you know I feel pretty good and I've not gotten you know I've not gotten phone calls or anybody I know that the first meeting was contentious but talked to Johnny and it seemed like people were fairly happy with the conditions that were put up and that's kind of what we're trying to lean on our boards to do that other comments Still need a motion, Mr. Chairman. I, I would like to say uh, I've met every time I go up under Pass Road, I look at that and wonder who in the world would ever use that property that close to the railroad tracks. I mean, there's, with the exception of the very end of it up there, there's not even room to have setbacks to build a, a house or anything. And don't understand why it's zoned residential to begin with because nothing could go in there except where he's talking about putting a, a building. Um, I really don't have an issue with them having a business there because if they're gonna shield it according to what our restrictions are, it's very little ever to be visible from the road and uh, heaven knows what the railroad keeps up there at their place is, is more of an eyesore than just about uh, any local business could create. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a motion that we uh, rezone this property for their use. Okay. Mr. Poindexter. Mr. Poindexter makes the motion. Is that with the conditions that Johnny had? Yes, okay. with the conditions. Could I make one more comment? Please comment I would just keep saying and I really mean this for the good because I don't want a bait and switch and I'm not saying you would do that but please make the buffer look as good and and as the trees as lush and all that if that plush lush whatever as you can make them because that that's going to make or break the look and you know that's what we want to see Have a motion. Do we have a second? I'd like to make a comment. I think the petitioners did what we've asked him to do. Um, and uh, I'm not sure what else you're going to put on this property. So follow up on Commissioner Schoff's comments. We're taking you at your word that you're going to use it for just as is intended. So with that in mind, I will second Mr. Poindexter's motion. Okay. Any other discussion or comments? Okay. 
All in favor of Mr. Poindexter's motion, raise your hand. Any opposed? 4-1. Okay. All right, let's move on to the consent agenda. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Or, first of all, any questions? I have a, I have a question. Um, I think Mr. Barnett might have the answer to for me that he we didn't have it just a moment ago, and that was on the cost or the suspected cost of the CMP update. Do we have an idea what that updated comprehensive plan is going to cost for the Rex and Park? I'd have to refer to Mr. Paul Moore to give us a, an estimate of what he's looking at for the Recreation uh, Comprehensive Master Plan update. It is budgeted at 65000 65000 Any other questions? I, I do have a question on the uh, what's been brought to us from the library folks. Uh, I notice it's on the consent agenda as well. Um, my question may be for uh, our attorney. Is that something that we will be in violation of or or whatever if we overrule the uh and are we well, the library board of trustees serves as an advisory capacity to this board uh, and those bylaws were adopted by the board of trustees we looked today to see if they had ever been adopted by this board and uh, we went back uh, all the way back to 1995, I believe, was the first year we started looking uh, to try see if, if uh, they had been adopted by this board because they had been updated. Uh, they were originally adopted by the Board of Trustees on 9-1996, revised 7-15-2004, again revised 6-18-2008, again revised April 15-2010, again revised... Uh, July 21st, 2011, and then on 8-19-2019, we could not find anything in any minutes of any of the board meetings from, I mean, from 1995 forward where the Board of County Commissioners actually adopted those bylaws uh, as being the law or whatever at that point in time. So even, even the bylaws talk about uh, that they make recommendations to this board, but this board shall appoint. It doesn't say that it has to appoint those that are recommended by the Board of Trustees, although that in the past I think pretty much has been not always done, but sometimes, most of the time probably done, and now the majority of the time. But... There is nothing that says that this board has to uh, wait for uh, the Board of Trustees to recommend someone and then approve only those people that's been recommended by the Board of Trustees. And also, it's one of the positions that we are replacing Carol Demi, correct? Now that I don't know. That's correct. And so she's leaving an unexpired term. Her term is July 21 to July 24. Their bylaws clearly state um, vacancies on the Board of Trustees shall be filled by the Board of County Commissioners for the unexpired term of the member creating the vacancy. That's correct, under their bylaws. Thank you, sir. I just wanted to make sure we were not doing anything yep. illegal or unethical. Yep. We looked at that today. Mm -hmm. And I'll just... Uh, so the clarification there I'm asking is so the one of the people that's been submitted would be filling that term is that is that right okay. any other questions just to follow up yes, on that please the, the folks the two people that are on here's appointment how would it be decided who's filling out the unexpired term of Miss Demi. 
I would say we could. Uh, I'm okay. You need, you need to. That. You need to. Do. You want? You want us to designate designate, to designate one that. person for that? I would think. Okay. Well. Okay. All right. So do we just need to amend the agenda to speak as, to that? Yes. So that we would need to. You'd have a motion and second and a vote. So I would make a motion that we approve Brent Ward to fill the vacancy left by Carol Demi. So you need a second on that and then a vote. We need to update the um, consent agenda. Okay, so uh, Ms. Finney makes the motion. Do I have a second? That Mr. Ward would, uh, would fill out uh, Ms. Demi's uh, term. And, and that would be in the form of a motion to modify the consent agenda and to add that. Yeah. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Let's show seconds. All in favor to, to correct the uh, consent agenda. Okay. All right. Now, do I have a motion uh, to approve the consent agenda? Or are there any other questions? I know there were some questions on other issues. I got my answer. You're good? Okay. Just, I think just a brief clarification on the that that five million three hundred forty thousand. We're accepting that money, and that was the one. If you go to the attachments, that goes with what project does that go with? Five, three, four. Okay. It's all the utility. It, I just want to make sure I was reading that right. Thank you. That's all I need. Did you need specifics on the projects? No. Okay. All right. Any other questions on items on the consent agenda? Okay. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Ms. Finney, do I have a second? Do I have Second. Okay, Mr. Renegar, second. Uh, all in favor of the consent agenda? Okay, unanimous. Thank you. Uh, county manager's report. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'd like to recognize four of our departments, uh, Human and Health Services, uh, Cooperative Extension, uh, Community Paramedic through EMS, and uh, Recreation and Parks, all four departments within the last month have received uh, individual grants. Um, I'm proud to say that each of the departments uh, look for additional funding to improve certain services that they're having, um, and they were very successful in finding grant opportunities to help, um, to, uh, to help along with our ongoing budget. Um, I'd like to, uh, as part of your consent agenda, you approve that May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And I know it's kind of last minute, but tomorrow uh, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Human and Health Services Training Room, we will be hosting the Davy Collaborative. Uh, the Davy Collaborative will be having a mental health and domestic violence provider fair, um, which I believe is open to the public. And that's all the report I have. Any questions? Uh Brian. Okay. All right. Uh, any old business? Any new business? Okay. Uh, commissioner's comments, Ms. Shove. We'll be brief, but. Um the main thing I wanted to mention, I think I'm saying the name right, Mr. Cesaro that was here, thank you for coming, and thank you for that breath of fresh air of commenting on some good hard work by public utilities, and uh, we really appreciate that because it's usually, you know, you get on the receiving end of complaints and not praises, and I know those guys work really hard just like a lot of our other uh, pro department, so thank you. Okay, Richard, Mr. Poindexter. I would also like to thank everybody for showing up tonight. Um, it's wonderful to look out and see almost a full uh, auditorium 
Um, also, I'd like to thank all of our county employees. They're wonderful. They do a fantastic job. And I'd like to uh, say thank you to the gentleman for saying what I do quite often, especially in the winter time, when I ride by and see the uh, hole that's dug on the side of the road and the guy's standing almost to their waist in water trying to get a leak stopped. Um, we do notice things like that and do appreciate it and glad that others in the, the neighborhoods do too and the rest of the county. And I would like to say something about uh, last weekend we had a, a, a fire, I guess you would call it, at William R. Navy uh, Fire Department. And it was, like he said, a fresher breath air to see the support that the people are in that community gave to the fire department and that the fire department gives back to the people in that community. Um, I was sort of disappointed that the rest of you didn't get in the Duncan booth too, but uh, uh, would like to, to send that out to the people in William R. Davy community. And, and I know all the fire departments in their community <coughs> share those same feelings and uh, I'd like to say thank you to all of them as well. Thank, thank you Richard. Uh, Terry? Thank you. Um, I really can't add anything to what Commissioner Pointer just said. I, I really, I said a lot from that our employees are our greatest asset. I truly believe that and um, to hear Mr. Cesaro, hopefully I'm saying that correct, um, kind of reinforce that. I, I appreciate that. So. Um, but anyway, thanks for coming out, and um, please join us next month. Thank you. And uh, uh, we failed to mention it earlier, but I would, uh, I think we all would be remiss if we weren't in prayer for uh, especially the folks down in Texas uh, that uh, so many innocent lives lost here uh, in the last few days. And, uh, but thank you all for being here. Uh, we really appreciate you coming. Excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry, Benita. <laughs> I know I always talk the longest, but still. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, first of all, in reference to uh, Richard talking about the spring fling at Weimar Davy, I just want to give kudos. The first person other than Chief Keaton to sign up to get in that Duncan boot was Cameron Webb. And... Cameron, I just appreciate the support you show all the departments. I don't really know how you do it sometimes, how you make yourself available to all of our different apartments plus take care of your own department, but thank you very much. So May is as busy as December, I always say, and we have multiple resolutions and proclamations in this consent agenda, but um, I just wanted to point out a few things because we do observe emergency medical services week national day of prayer nurses week teacher appreciation mental health awareness corrections officers week um, law enforcement celebrations there's many many extremely important people in our community are celebrated during the month of may we need to celebrate them all the time but please make sure you give them an extra handshake and thank you this month for all of the things that they do um, to keep our citizens safe, to keep our communities going, and um, to teach our children. And Older Americans Month is also in May, so there's a lot of things going on. And I just appreciate all of you, and we're so glad that everyone came tonight. I'm very grateful for Tamala and her beautiful prayer, and for Roger for leading our pledge, and thank you for his service. And um, just be safe and enjoy this very busy month. And I apologize, Benita, for jumping ahead of you. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Uh, is that Mr. Poindexter? Okay. Second? Second. Right. Ms. Schof, all in favor? Okay. We stand adjourned. Thank you.